Welcome to the EV Documentation and Scrutineering presentation for Learn to Win. So, first things first, the most important thing you need to do is make sure you've read all of the rules. Make sure you start with the Formula Student UK Supplementary Rules and then look at what the differences are between those and the main Formula Student Rule set. And don't just rely on one person's understanding of a rule. Try and do a, a peer review of the rules. Do it as a group exercise. Make sure you've got a common understanding of what the intent is. And if you're still not sure, raise it as a question on the Formula Student Questions database. And remember that safety and compliance start during the design phase of your vehicle. So make sure you don't leave those aspects too late. So, what documentation do you need for an electric vehicle? The main thing is the electrical systems form, and that is key to your success. And remember, it's not just for us. It's also that it help you validate your design. And it is a working document. So as you work through your design, work through your ESF at the same time. So don't throw it together for the deadline. Work through it as you're going along to make sure that what you're designing fits what we're looking for. And obviously remember to revisit your ASF as and when your design changes. So now we'll quickly have a look at a couple of the key differences in the rules for FS UK over the standard Formula Student rule set. One of the key ones is the Tractive System Active, like the T-cell. So EV4105 in the main rule set is here. And the big difference for FS UK is that from the two subparagraphs, we've deleted the section that says, and that the low voltage system is switched on. And to cover that off, we've added a few extra subparagraphs. So the first one is that it's got to be powered from an independent power supply. And that it's always powered when the LVS is switched on. But importantly, it must remain powered for at least 15 minutes after you've switched the LVS off. Now, it is allowed for you to deactivate the T-cell once the LVS is switched off. And you can confirm that the tractive system is deactivated and everything decayed below 60 volts but the driver must not be able to deactivate the T-cell. And the other thing we've added is that to make sure it complies with the requirements of T11.1, but must not be deactivated by opening the LVMS, i.e. T11.3.1. The reason we've done this is to manage the risk where if the LVS is switched off, you do not know whether the tractive system has actually decayed below 60 volt because your T-cell has gone out. So you don't know whether the vehicle is truly in a safe state. So if there's any problem with the LVS or the car stops out on track and a marshal switches off the LVS before the TS, it's so we can all be certain that that vehicle is safe to approach. One of the other key differences is our access rules for lithium batteries. Now we say that the battery must be accessible by a fire extinguisher nozzle of 35 millimeter in diameter and 150 millimeters in length. And this applies to all lithium ion batteries, whether they be tractive system batteries or low voltage batteries. And the reason is the extinguishers we use. We use specific lithium extinguishers and they need direct access to the battery to be able to be effective. So directly accessible is with the driver seated normally in the vehicle and without removing body panels. You can have covers which are easily punched through, but they must be clearly marked. And if you do have an access hole through bodywork or a cover, it must be identified using the symbol there. And if the battery is more than 50 millimeters inboard of the access hole, 
you must use a tube of at least 35 millimeter in diameter to direct the extinguisher towards the battery. That tube can be no more than 750 millimeters in length and it must be separated from the driver by a firewall. Which means that the opening, the aperture for that tube, cannot be in the cockpit. Now we've made a couple of documentation changes for 2021. What we've done is we've removed the requirement for an FMEA and amended the ESF to suit. So previously you would have generated an FMEA and an ESF. But what we're doing is we are removing the FMEA, but we're not removing it completely. We still think there is some value in the content within that FMEA. So what we've done is we've taken the two documents and merged them into one document within the ESF. So we've added a few elements to the ESF to cover some of the content that used to be in the FMEA. So in this example here, which is the IMD, you'll see there's a new section at the bottom called Failure Detection, Control and Mitigation. So what we want you to do in there is to briefly describe what the causes and consequences are of the key failures of the IMD and its inputs or its outputs, and how you intend to detect, mitigate and control those. So, when we review the ESFs, there's always a few common issues we find. So, let's just quickly have a look at some of those. So, a classic is the schematic of the shutdown circuit. Don't just copy the example in the rules. We know what that looks like actually put a schematic in that is what is in your car. Fuses, don't just rely on the headline rating. Make sure that the fuse will adequately protect the wiring and components that it is intended to protect. And make sure you complete all the tables properly. Put all the information in. And if you haven't fully matured the design of an element, Explain the concept as far as you can rather than leaving it blank and definitely don't try to delete it because we will notice that it's not there. And remember, as I said before, as your design evolves, revisit your ESF and update it as required. If it's after the submission date, get in touch with the scrutineer that's been allocated to you. Explain what the changes are and ask them whether you need to submit a revised ESF. You won't get penalised for that. So what's the scrutineering process for EVs? We start off in two parts with accumulator scrutineering and low voltage electrical scrutineering. So for this initial part, we want the accumulator out of the car and that will go off to accumulator scrutineering and the car will go through as much of the electrical scrutineer as it can without the accumulator fitted and without needing to go HV live. Once we're happy with both of those elements, you can put the accumulator back in the car and we'll do all the high voltage electrical scrutineering. And once you've gone through that, you can then go through the rest of safety, chassis and technical scrutineering before you come back to us for the rain test. We do the rain test after the rest of scrutineering because for some reason a lot of scrutineers don't like working on a wet electric car. And then once you've passed the rain test, it's off to the tilt test, brake, etc. And a little tip before you go to tilt, especially if you're going directly from the rain test, try and make sure any pooled water has come out of the car because they may well fail you at tilt if water starts pouring out of the car, even if it's nothing to do with your vehicle, it's just where we've rained on it. So what can you do to prepare for scrutineering? Photos, lots of them. We want some good quality photographs of the assembly of your accumulators, controllers, etc. Because if we can't get confidence from pictures, we might actually ask you to dismantle something in your accumulator. And you probably don't want to be doing that. Scrutineering is a long process and you want to get through it as quickly as you can. So adding extra time into it is not something that's a good thing. 
Make sure you've got all the data sheets, design drawings, spare PCBs, etc., to help us understand your components and your design. And most importantly, go through all the checks yourself before you get to us, even the rain test. It's not a difficult test to do, but very few teams have ever even considered doing a rain test before they turn up at the event. And they sat there with their fingers crossed while we do the rain test. Do it beforehand. Don't give yourself any nasty surprises. So also make sure you've got the right people available. Make sure you've got your ESO system specialist available to explain to us what is there and what's going on. And make sure all the relevant documentation is available. You might need duplicates as well. If your accumulator is in accumulator scrutineering and the car's in with the main scrutineering, we might want to look at the same documentation at the same time in both. Save yourself and us a lot of hassle. As I said, if everything's available where it's needed, it's going to save all of us time. And remember that scrutineering isn't a debugging and fault finding session. It's an acceptance test. And you won't be allowed to remain in the scrutineering room bay to diagnose and resolve significant problems. You'll be asked to go back to your pit, work on the car there, and then rejoin the queue. So, what common issues do we find at scrutineering? Rating of components within the accumulator container. Make sure things are appropriately rated for voltage, current and fire resistance. Make sure your charging is properly monitored by the AMS and the IMD and your charging shutdown circuit meets the requirements. And make sure there's no unswitched HV outside the accumulator container. It sounds obvious, but we find it every year. The same with live unplugged HV connections. There should be an interlock. Again, we find it every year. Check the grounding of all your conductive components. Make sure your segregation between HV and LV meets the requirements. And have a look at HV components in the proximity of rotating or moving parts. We always find something that needs to be moved. It might be as simple as just clipping it to a chassis tube, but look for it yourselves first. It saves everybody. We frequently find that the tractive system activation system isn't fully compliant with the rules. Remember that once the shutdown system is closed, the driver must make a subsequent additional action to energize the tractive system. And also that applies to re-energizing the tractive system. So reclosing the shutdown system must not activate the tractive system. And similarly for the ready to drive mode, make sure your ready to drive activation is correct and make sure it's properly deactivated when the shutdown system is opened. We found a number of instances where after the shutdown circuit is opened and then closed again, if the car was in ready to drive mode when it was opened, it remained in ready to drive mode when it was reactivated. So make sure your system doesn't do that. And make sure the plausibility checks are easy for us to carry out. Too often, they're connectors that are buried in the bottom of a monocoque somewhere. Make it easy for us to do, because if it's easy for us to do, it'll be easy for you to do as well. And if it's easy for you to do, we've probably got confidence that you've actually done it and checked things before. And it just gives us that wider, warm feeling about the way you've put your vehicle together and tested it. If it's something that is nigh on impossible to test, we're going to have that gut feeling that you know, maybe you haven't tested things yourself. Maybe you're using us as your test rather than you, we're there to make sure that what you've tested does meet the rules. Safety procedures. Remember, safety procedures aren't just for the lab, they're for everywhere. They stop people getting hurt, no matter who it is. And they're probably even more important when you're at the event. Because if you're working on something at the event, the odds are you're doing it in a very compressed time scale. And that's when mistakes tend to happen. So make sure you always follow your procedures. And where possible, avoid working on live HV. I know in some instances 
it's not possible not to work on Live HP, but minimize it. And never work alone. Make sure you double check each other's work. So, in summary, make sure you're sensible. Make sure you're safe. Make good decisions. And read the rules and keep reading them and keep reading them and keep reading. The more familiar you are with the rules, the less you're likely to make a mistake. Speak to people that can help you. Previous students, scrutineers. Take lots of photos and most importantly, have fun. Thank you very much.